So it's been three years since the last D23 Expo, but now the Disney News event is back and the weekend of coverage has kicked off early, with all new details and glimpses at upcoming Disney Park projects from around the world. So let's dive into all of that, up next. This video is sponsored by Disney Collect by Tops, where there is an absolute massive variety of beautifully designed cards that showcase over 90 years of Disney and Pixar animation history, with new collections being added all the time. So download the free app for iOS and Android today with the link in the description box below. Hi there Waltoneers, I'm Jack and this is DSMI Newscast and of course with it being D23 Expo weekend I'm going to be here on the channel covering everything extensively coming out of the Expo in terms of news and so if you don't want to miss an update be sure to subscribe down below and turn on the notification bell and so therefore that way you're the first to know when the latest video is released. And now with all of that out of the way let's get straight into it as last night Disney held a media preview of the Expo show floor that included a look at the Walt Disney Archives Step in Time exhibit, the Journey Through Storytelling content exhibit, and of course the Disney Parks Pavilion titled The Wonderful World of Dreams. Now, as we've come to expect from previous expos, this Parks Pavilion isn't about revealing new projects, although Disney has stated that they do have plenty of new exciting projects that they're looking forward to announcing on Sunday. And the other thing about this pavilion that I find odd is that usually it has a centerpiece model or project to anchor the entire pavilion around. Whereas in the case of it this year, it seems like all of these projects are complementary exhibits to something bigger. So it's certainly possible that Disney may reveal something big before the end of the weekend, much in the same way as what they did with the Galaxy's Edge model in 2017. But nevertheless, let's still dissect these incredible models and uncover more information about these existing projects. Beginning with what is easily the most noteworthy project, and that is the re-theme of Splash Mountain at both Disneyland and Walt Disney World to a Princess and the Frog inspired attraction titled Tiana's Bayou Adventure that is scheduled to open in late 2024. And as we can see from this model of the Disneyland attraction retheme, the iconic exterior of Splash Mountain, for the most part, will remain relatively the same in the basic structure, but is then going to receive changes to the themed terrain and foliage that will likely see the addition of cypress trees, Spanish moss, duckweed, and spider lilies, to bring about more of our authentic aesthetic of a Louisiana swamp. And then there will also be cosmetic changes to the old barn, lift hill and the water tower with signage that will then theme it to the new story involving Princess Tiana and Prince Naveen. Although curiously, this model does depart from the widely circulated original concept art for this attraction retheme from 2020. As you see in the artwork from back then, Splash Mountain's Chickapin Hill was depicted as being reimagined as Mama Odie's treehouse, complete with a shipwreck lodged in the tree. However, as we can see in the model, Chickapin Hill has been replaced with a heavy amount of foliage instead. And although the retheme of the exterior does look to be rather understated, we can see that in this artistic rendering that it's still going to look fantastic at night with an all new lighting package that will elicit the vibrant atmosphere of New Orleans. But in terms of the actual attraction component, according to the Imagineers, it will not only still have animatronics, including figures of Princess Tiana, but it has been said that the attraction will introduce 16 new characters. And the way I'm interpreting this is that it probably means that Disney is going to be repurposing and reusing a lot of the existing animatronic figures for new critters found along the bayou. And in addition to all of this, it was also revealed that Disneyland's New Orleans Square is going to get a Tiana's Place restaurant as well. And despite the location for this not being specified, if you look at a map, I think it's only logical to conclude that the French Market restaurant is the likely location contender to be rethemed. 
And then sticking with Disneyland, there was also this model of the upcoming Mickey's Toontown revamp that should open next year that shows us not only the Al Capitoon Theatre, but also a redesigned Goofy's house and Donald's Duck Pond, along with the addition of the all-new Good Boy Grocers and Daisy's Cafe. Then, moving on over to Epcot, we had this first look at the actual Walt Disney statue that is soon to be located within Dreamers Point in World Celebration. And just like the iconic Walt and Mickey statue that can be found in parks around the world, that's called the Partner Statue, this statue is going to be officially known as Walt the Dreamer. Although I've got to say that now having seen this pose in its finished form, it does look kind of questionable. And personally, I feel that a better reference pose might have been this one from this photo of Walt as the Dreamer instead. Then also showcased within the pavilion in terms of Epcot was this scale model of what will be a 16 foot tall Tafiti that will be found within the Moana Journey of Water experience that is currently under construction and should be opening in the not so distant future. However, what's a little bit unusual about this year's parks pavilion is that there's a much heavier focus on the international parks and that might be because of the previously announced Disney park projects for both Disneyland and Walt Disney World have mostly wrapped up construction and so hopefully Disney deliver on more announcements for the domestic parks this weekend. But let's still talk about the international parks as there's some very interesting projects currently underway which we haven't heard too much about. Starting with the first ever Zootopia themed land to be built at a Disney park as this is supposedly targeting an opening of next year at Shanghai Disneyland. And here we can now see that the attraction vehicle is as expected going to be themed to a ZPD car. Thanks to this model of a vehicle, it seemingly confirms that this will indeed be a trackless ride system for the attraction. And this would make sense after all, as the attraction is going to see guests zipping around the various environments and climates of the suburbs of Zootopia on a high speed ZPD chase. And much like Rise of the Resistance, this is also supposedly going to be a 360 degree immersive experience with physical set pieces, as we have previously seen examples of the types of figures that will be featured within the attraction. Then, lastly, we also received models for the ride vehicle that will be featured within the four attractions that will make up the upcoming Fantasy Springs at Tokyo Disney Sea. With there being a model for the more elaborate Frozen Ever After style boat ride, a model of another boat that will seat 16 guests, for the Tangled ride, that's expected to be a slightly smaller boat ride than that of the Frozen attraction, and then there's this ride vehicle that's of a galleon pirate ship that will be used within the Peter Pan attraction that is rumoured to be a simulator style of attraction possibly in the same ride structure as Flight of Passage. And then also there's this four-person ride vehicle for a Tinkerbell basic flat ride featured within the Pixie Hollow section of the Neverland area of Fantasy Springs. And then also whilst we're on the topic, they also have this latest aerial footage of the construction of Fantasy Springs over at Tokyo Disney Sea, And it really does look incredibly impressive as this is clearly shaping up to be one of the most expansive, elaborate and immersive themed lands that Disney has built in recent years. However, at this point, you may have noticed that throughout all of the coverage of the pavilion, overall, it was relatively light in terms of representation for Walt Disney World projects. And well, I'm saying optimistic and hopeful that that means that we're going to be getting a lot of new projects announced later on this weekend for the various Disney parks. So stay tuned to the channel for all of that. But now it's over to you, Walton, as I would like to know, with this now being the official kickoff to D23 Expo weekend, what are you most looking forward to hopefully see announced this weekend at the Expo and the reason why? And of course, if you enjoy this coverage, it'd be great if you could give this video a massive thumbs up, share this video with a friend, subscribe down below, hit the notification bell, do all the normal YouTube things. But with all that being said, I'll be back with some more coverage later on. But for the time being, I've been Jack. You've been you, and I'll see you real soon.